Webflow's pricing plans can actually be pretty confusing, especially if you're new to Webflow and considering the recent changes to plans and pricing. Now, Webflow actually charges for two separate things. There is a site plan, which is to host your website, and then also they charge for workspaces, which has a lot to do with teams and access and collaboration. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the difference between both of those and let you know which plans you need and which ones you don't. So hopefully we can save you a little money and give you a great experience with Webflow. So like I mentioned, Webflow charges for two separate things. You've got your site plans, which is basically site hosting. Within that, you can choose plans for a general website or an e-commerce website. And then on the other side, you have workspaces, which is team access collaboration. And within that, you have options for in-house teams and then freelancers and agencies. So first, let's talk about site plans or site hosting. Now, first off, if you have a general website that does not utilize Webflow's e-commerce features, you're going to be able to choose one of these plans. First, you have your free starter plan, which is going to be more than enough for basically any site that is in development or you're just using for practice or is for a personal project and you don't really need to have a custom domain connected to it, this is gonna be a great option. But note that all of these free starter plans have limits to how many CMS items you can have and also how many form submissions can come through your website. So once you decide you do wanna take your site live, connect your domain, you're going to have to choose one of these paid plans. The first option is the basic plan, which is 18 bucks a month. And this allows you to post a basic website or landing page that does not utilize any of Webflow's CMS functionality. So you can't have a CMS blog or anything else like that. But this is a great option if you just have a basic site. However, in most cases, you're gonna be using this CMS plan. This gives you everything that you need to run a website and utilize Webflow's CMS, which is their content management system. You can have up to 2,000 CMS items, you can have up to 1,000 monthly form submissions, and you have all of the bandwidth and guest editors that you need to run a successful website. Now, after you scale up from there, you're going to move into the business and enterprise plans, which in most cases, this isn't going to be necessary unless you've got a really big website with tons of traffic and you need a ton of bandwidth and a ton of guest editors. So there are rare cases where this is necessary, but when looking at this, for the most part, you're just going to need the starter plan when you're getting things started and in development. And then you're going to move to that paid CMS plan to get everything else that you need. Now, like pretty much any other software, if you pay annually, you're gonna get a pretty big discount. Looking at all these, this is how much you'll save per month. In particular, on that CMS plan, you're gonna save around six bucks per month. So the question we need to ask is, why is Webflow so expensive to host a website? And is it gonna be worth it for me? And at the end of the day, yes, it is more expensive than a lot of options out there, but you're paying for more than just hosting. You're also paying for the incredible design capabilities that Webflow has. You're paying for the Webflow dashboard, the editor where you can quickly hop in and update text and images, and you're paying for the CMS functionality, which truly is incredible. So if you're utilizing those things to the fullest, then it's definitely gonna be worth your money to host your site on Webflow. Now, if you have an e-commerce website, your plans are gonna look slightly different. These are the plans that you're gonna have to pay for in order to host and take your e-commerce site live. So first, you're gonna have your standard plan, which you can see here allows you to have up to 500 items in your e-commerce store. The big red flags for me on the standard plan are the 2% transaction fee and the $50,000 annual sales volume. Now, the reason that I don't like this is Typically speaking, you're going to be collecting payments through a third party like Stripe, which also has a fee of a few percent. And so if you're paying 2% with Webflow, 3% with Stripe, that's going to get pretty steep. Now, as I did the math on this, once your shop starts making around $30,000 per year, you're actually going to be losing money on this plan. So it's going to be more worth it to bump up to the next plan and not have that transaction fee. So the most popular e-commerce plan is this Plus Plan. It's 84 bucks a month, but it gives you most everything that you're going to need. You can have up to a thousand items in your e-commerce store. There's a 0% transaction fee, which is really nice, and you have a sales ceiling of $200,000 per year. 
So if you're running a shop that's making under $200,000 per year, this is gonna be the perfect plan for you. If you need something larger, you're gonna to have to bump up to this advanced plan, which is 235 bucks per month. And this is just going to increase your limitations. You can have up to 3,000 items. There still is a 0% transaction fee, but there's an unlimited annual sales volume, which is going to allow you to scale as quickly and as large as you want. Now, like the other plans, if you wanna pay annually, it's gonna save you quite a bit of money, anywhere between 10 to $23 per month as the pricing currently stands. So let's go back to this question, why is hosting an e-commerce site on Webflow so expensive and is it worth it? In my personal opinion, I still think that Webflow is not quite there on their full e-commerce functionality. Yes, you have all of the capabilities in terms of design, so you can build these beautiful e-commerce websites with a custom cart and custom checkout flow, but at the end of the day, all the things that happen on the back end to run an e-commerce store you just don't quite have everything that you need. So is it worth it to me? No, I would probably end up building my e-commerce site on something like Shopify, but for certain situations, it might be a great fit for you. So you'll just have to weigh those options and determine if it's a good fit. All right, so that's everything that you need to host your website on Webflow. But now let's talk about workspaces. Like I mentioned, workspaces are for in-house teams and freelancers and agencies to allow multiple team members to be in, to have access, to collaborate. And while there are pretty great features, you're gonna find that they're pretty expensive as you grow. So looking at these workspaces, very similar to our hosting plans, we have two different categories. There is plans for in-house teams and then plans for freelancers and agencies. Now this might seem kind of confusing, but at the end of the day, the only big differences between these is the plans for in-house teams have more capabilities when it comes to custom code, code exporting, and billing permission. But the only real factors that you have to look at in the differences between these plans are the number of seats that you can have and the number of unhosted sites you can have within your dashboard. Now, the nice part about all these workspace plans is you're always going to be able to start on a free starter plan. And in most cases, this is going to be more than enough to run all your projects, all your websites, and not have any additional seats. And you have to consider that you can also share your login with your team members, and they can get into that same account without needing additional seats. But if you do need to have multiple people inside your account, if you wanna be able to manage their access and, and collaborate and all these different things, you're gonna to have to bump up to either the core plan or the growth plan, which you can see are 28 bucks per month per seat, and 60 bucks per month per seat respectively. And so you can see that that will get pretty pricey as you scale. Now the plans for freelancers and agencies are gonna look very similar. Of course, you have your free starter plan, which is gonna be the perfect option in 95% of cases. And then if you need more than that, you have the freelancer plan, which is 24 bucks per month per user and the agency plan, which basically just doubles. Now, like anything else, if you wanna pay annually for these things, it's going to give you a discount. Now, I know that there are a lot of people out there that aren't super thrilled with how expensive these workspace plans are, and I have to agree with you, it is pretty expensive. I know Webflow is working on some things to make this a little bit better and a little more worth it, but at the end of the day, I would recommend that most of you just use a free starter plan, share login access, do what you need to do, so you don't have to pay these additional fees, especially if you're working with a client. It's gonna be more difficult to convince them to pay for a hosting plan and then also pay for a workspace plan and then give you access. And so stick to those free starter plans. And you're going to have more than enough. So if I miss anything, make sure to drop it down in the comments. If you like more videos like this about Webflow, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on your notifications so you get notified every time I have a new video that drops. And also I'm going to drop a couple of videos up here about Webflow so you can continue your learning and your training to become a master at Webflow. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.